Oh, and I love when everything is not lined up the way it's supposed to be. Here we go. <laughs> right? Love lovely live shows. Here we go. Welcome to another exciting episode of Riding Through the Unknown. I'm your host, Michael. And for those of you who are joining us, thank you for your patience. It was one of those unfortunacies of life happens. So we are starting delayed, but I promise we will have a full episode for you. Mary is very generous with her time, so... Uh, hopefully we'll still get to cover everything and I'm excited for the new information that's coming and for those of you who are new to the show this season this is Mary's second appearance so we are very excited and blessed to have her back on the show so without further ado I am going to stop talking so Mary can start with her stuff and i am going to turn it over to mary hi <laughs> well i don't i don't know how to start it uh hi thanks for having me again <laughs> you're welcome well so what's been new in your world since we were you were on the show last year um gosh a lot <laughs> Uh, so the, the, I got the master exit document done and, uh, it, the military got a copy and then I had to send copies, uh, make addendums and send that to, uh, certain places in the government. And these are all, you can all look them all up. One of them was the, um, Federal Reserve Bank of New York, cause that's where they keep your um straw man your other person your conspiracy theory uh twin uh trust account um and then for those that don't know what the straw man is please please google it <laughs> it's it's everywhere now um and the the federal treasury uh is the second place but you have to send it to the custodian of the alien property. So that's always interesting. I'm curious to see why that title is what it is. So, but I haven't quite learned that yet. Um, and then to the chief and commander over the military, again, is probably, it's, I sent it to Trump. So they all received it. And I wait, I have to wait uh, 30, I think 30 to 60 days to hear anything back. So I'm just kind of in a waiting period right now. Um, I got my crest done. I got access to the Adam and Eve bloodline um, because when I, uh, I'll have to at one point go to Switzerland to do a blood test um, and if my DNA matches the treasury that is supposed to be in my inheritance, then I will receive a certificate from them to go to the Hall of Titles. And when you go to the Hall of Titles, from my understanding, these are very majestic people, uh, very loyal to creator, and um, not anybody can just access the treasuries 
the ancient treasuries of Hanova, which are God's treasuries to his children, um, which we haven't had access to for a very long time because of the invader races and the occupation race. So that is what I've been doing <laughs> since we wow. talked last. Summarizing it all. <laughs> no, that was summarized really well. And so I'm curious, you say you finalized your crest. Can you share what the crest looks like and what it means um not yet i just drew it today it's been in my head uh, i am an artist but uh there was some I, I had my heart broken when i was young and i couldn't draw anymore it was weird so drawing comes when opportunity comes i guess uh i don't know people deal with trauma differently when i was growing up art was my escape from life and uh, I, I deeply fell in love with somebody and we split up and I actually had a heart attack. <laughs> so I uh, was severely traumatized uh, because of it and I, I couldn't draw. So I, today was a day and I was in class with my kids because I homeschool and I just, it just went down and I put in what I believed my past crest would have looked like, the ones that they have hidden. Um, it does have a heart in it. I'm not saying I'm the queen of hearts by any means, <laughs> but I feel like my crest had hearts. Um, and when I was in grade school, I did the play uh, Alice in Wonderland and I was the queen of hearts. So not like off with your head kind of thing. I was great at it. Don't get me wrong. I, nobody after me could ever perform it like I did. Um, but Looking like a and, true actor. <laughs> no, that didn't come from me. That came from the teacher who actually did it. Everybody oh. after me, he said, was terrible. <laughs> So, it, yeah, no, I, I guess I can perform, but I, you know, I was little. We were all in grade school. So, um, I, I'm trying to think of what I, the compass is on it because I'm all about the compass. And, um, again, I'm here to fight God's war. So I want to save the planet just like everybody else does. And so that to me, the compass represents the world. You know, all four corners. And so the compass is on it. Um, the crescent moon. Yeah. And the crescent moon is the crown. I had it shaped in the crown with the lotus flower because I'm from Lotus. Uh, the town I live in. And yeah, there's just a lot of interesting stuff. So I, um, I can't wait to get it you know, finalized and digitalized. And then I'm, I'll, I, when I have it copywritten and trademarked, I'll, I'll post it out. But yeah, I don't definitely don't want people stealing it. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. And so family crests are actually really more important than people realize. Everyone thinks, yeah. Oh, it's just an image painted on a shield from the old days. Right. Like, no, there, there's actually is a lot of, deep meaning and family history and to the crest there is and, and honestly everybody has to look at why the elites have crests but we don't but we used to our family history used to and then when i found out what happened with that uh when the wars were going on in europe uh africa um everywhere around the world america after the reset of tartaria um they you know they flattened it out did the mud flood thing and the few villages that survived that whole thing obviously were the the indian native americans here um they were trying to rebuild from that whole devastation but the new world opportunity is where we lost our crests because there were laws put in in the i think it was the 1700s where I could be wrong on the dates. I, I have to go back and look. But you had to, you had to give up your entitlement in order to start fresh out here. So how they did it, and again, as I'm going through the ascension into the kingdom of heaven on earth, 
you start to remember everything and it's it's kind of a cool journey um you have someone uh, behind you we do my son here <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh no We're at the park um so as you go through it you start to remember what happened because through your past lives and stuff but you have to accept wanting to be in the kingdom of god so right now we're all in the kingdom of lucifer so that is a real thing and you don't realize how real it is until you start doing this you know this journey and it's like whoa <laughs> it's wow talk about hypnosis on steroids and that's what the mk ultra was about so um it's like you're reading my mind because i was just thinking <laughs> is this connected yeah. to your mk delta past right yeah well mk ultra is just an umbrella for all the other programs within it and it's still a part of artichoke everybody thinks oh when they closed artichoke they didn't close it they just renamed it they still have artichoke it's still active doing well and hidden and hiding other things <laughs> So don't they don't actually close our, things. They just move it yeah. and rename it. Yeah, yeah, I love how our military, well, I say military, but it's more of the deep state cabal or whatever you want to call it, faction. Just simply rename something and says, see, we closed it. And then we all go, great, it's closed. Nobody thinks, hey, this thing that you're doing over here seems exactly like this. Right. Exactly. But on steroids. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, so yeah, everybody that came over here for the New World Opportunity exchanged their titles uh, for um, opportunities. Which oh. There we go. Up, oh, she's muted herself. Let's see. Can I unmute her? No. Oh, they, they took the mic off. So now her mic. So hopefully we'll we'll get her back, everyone. Don't don't panic. We'll get this figured out. Um, it's the joys of doing live shows. I'm sure she'll be right back and we can continue delving into the unknown and piecing together the information that she has to share with us. And I will say as for our family, my family, I have looked up my father's crest, but I have not looked up my mother's side's crest. So that is something I need to make a note of to do. And so let's see. Yep, she's messaging me that the system kicked her out where she's at on her phone so hopefully we'll get her back in here shortly and for those that remember epi the episode she was on prior we had the same issues so hopefully this will be a one-time kickoff, and they'll leave us alone so we can have our show. And let's see. Is she back? She's back. Or can she not hear me now? Oh. Still having a little bit of, yes, Crossroads meets the Ocean Rose. I agree. We were talking about something so controversial. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so sorry about that. 
<laughs> no, that's all right. We we were commenting that uh yeah, that it's so controversial what we're talking about. They cut your mic and cut your signal. <laughs> They're like, "No, stop. Don't let people know what they did." Hold on, real Okay, sorry about that. Um, no, you're so totally fine. Where was I? Oh, so yeah, so when they entered the country, you gave up your entitlement for the new opportunity in America. Going through the stages, let's fast forward up to 1933, where the banks came in. So this is how born because you're entitled to gold, silver, gem, and jewels. So no, again, nobody should have been suffering, and we knew this. Uh, um, I'm frozen. <laughs> oh, your your voice is still uh, coming funny. through, but yes, your uh -huh. image is uh, freezing up a little bit. Is it okay? All right. Image is good, and that? hopefully the lag will get in. That's better. So. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, so this is kind of how America stole um, our entitlements, our wealth. Um, so anybody who's done their ancestry, because I did mine like 15 years ago. And I was like, man, we should have just stayed in Europe. It seems like the minute we all got to America, we all became poor and broke and slaves. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, how did that happen? I mean, we were kings, queens, princesses, dukes, duchesses. And it's like, wow. And so I had to look it up. I wanted to see in history what happened. And sure enough, the, that's what happened. We gave up our entitlements for a new opportunity. And how they hid it. So you can still have your titles, but this is how they do it in the elite, the elite, like secret societies. They let you have your entitlements, but over here, you can only be a lord or a lady or a sir, like a sir knight. So uh, that's in the secret society. So they let you do your shield. Uh, you go through the whole thing. And uh, so I had some people, some family members over here who had crests. And I'm like, why do they have crests, but nobody else has crests? So then I found out there, you look at some of their tombstones and they'll have like the Masonic logo. They'll have like the Templar star on their tombstones. And it's like, oh, that's how they allowed you to get your crest back. But when you do that with the secret societies, um, you actually give all your inheritance to that particular secret society in order to get your titles back, but with consequences. So, I don't know. To me, I'm like, is it worth it? I'd rather take the uh, inheritance than the title, I think. Right. Well, they're keeping it from you either way. So right. Um, the real inheritance is the treasuries. Um, but the, again, they, they can't take it from you. You have to give it willingly because that's the whole Lucifer kingdom thing. So right now, everybody should have like trillions of dollars in gold and gems and like you should be making your own jewelry you have your own estates with you know loyal subjects and stuff not everybody can be a high level royal some people are subjects but we're all mixed in the invader races are mixed in the occupations people are mixed in nobody actually knows who they are it's crazy so when i went on this journey with the master exit documents um, I figured it out and it like, literally it comes to you. You're like, Oh, I totally see it now. And, and then getting the bloodline of Adam and Eve, that was, I don't know if that was more devastating or, <laughs> but we asked for the truth. Right. So right. it hits you hard. It really hits you hard to know the truth about the Bible. The Bible's real and it is, it is a confession. It is a timeline. So like I've said before, there's two truths in there and there's their truth and there's our truth, right? Or the truth of what happened. But I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings because it's, it's a deep conversation with that one. But yeah, there's, there's not lies in there, but there are a lot of deception, a lot of shenanigans. So 
Kind of like what you and I were talking about earlier with Adam giving a rib to Eve and maybe she was a little bit earlier. That was fascinating thought. I thought about it after we got the phone. So, but I do believe that Lilith was an Atlantean princess. So, who was married to Adam uh, before they were ascended. So. Right, and the other thing that we were talking about, too, that talking about, like, hidden information that's in plain sight is the story says that Adam and Eve's children, which would be Cain and Abel, married women from tribes but they tell us adam and eve are the only humans and then their sons would be the so there should theory be four people where did these women of these tribes come from and everybody in religion goes yeah they got married yes it's so nice it's like wait where did they come from (laughs) nobody asked that question right they just they were spit out in eggs or something. You know, the, the long-term question, the chicken or the egg came first. Which one? <laughs> I know, and it's so, interesting, yeah, and too, then... that they use the term tribe because that would mean there's a cluster of people and another word for tribe is clan. Or you could even say, right. like, star race. So it's like really opens up the question, what was these tribes? So looking at the timeline with the the sons and daughters of Adam and Eve, the tribe was the male and the house was the feminine. So the kingdoms were actually named after the women. So the Canaanite, for example, the Canaanite kingdom was actually a daughter of Adam and Eve. So it was named after her. And then the, the house of or the tribe of was the male so whoever the husband was it would be the kingdom of the female which would have been the canaanite uh because there's somebody that had the the their first and middle names because they were all uh oh gosh what was the last name they okay they all had the same last name so the the middle name was subject to the kingdom name um so it would have been the canaanite the enoch and the there Name. That thing is a race, but then no, the the started with the feminine. Bible, when it talks about the two Jesuses, without talking about the two Jesuses, <laughs> it's as the three kings went to um, Judai or Jesus of Ju- Judai, Judai. Day. So it, the real name is J-A-U-D-I is her spelling. That's Jesus 12's mother. And so the, say, the three kings went to uh, Jesus of Judai. They were talking about the mom. And then when they say the, the three wise men went to see Jesus of Mary, <laughs> that's a different, different mom, mom child. So you start to put the puzzle together when you're looking at it, and it's mind-blowing. So the uh, creator actually had a lot of children, and he only wakes them up as they go. So my story is is there's there was 10 of us. So ten, there's 10 people with the ability to stop the world order. Three of them were killed before me, and then I was woken up to do this job If I fail, there's six more just like me that can do it. Do you know what I mean? So it's whoever wakes up and hits the finish line, I guess. So that, again, interesting. (laughs) So how many children are put down here that can do what we need to do to help, you know, put the world back into the kingdom of uh, heaven on earth and out of the kingdom of Lucifer? So it's interesting how you say there's 10 because one of the things that I've noticed that mainstream religion likes to talk a lot about is the tribe, the 12 tribes. And you see a lot of references and a lot of books of 12 tribes of, and then there's supposedly a 13th tribe member. 
and our calendar was originally 13 months got shortened to 12. we were we were discussing that earlier too and yeah there's actually 14 but, tribes but uh kane's kingdoms uh literally took out two of them with no survivors so that's how it became the 12 tribes but they had 50 children so just so you know there's more tribes <laughs> it's not just 12. <laughs> Sorry. and i have all yeah. the names the dates they were born and who they married and <laughs> wow so joanne yeah, stewart so is said it's, a, it's a journey yeah she she's asking didn't kane go off and make his own clan that's what they yeah. tell us but they also said he, he wore a mark and so he was like immortalized um well he's i don't know about the immortalization but they he knows how to live longer for sure he could still be alive today it is a curse um i know the the fallen angels are still here 200 of them are the ones that actually run the world um let's see cain killed abel over the wife situation because he wanted to marry his twin sister but Abel, at 79 years old, married his twin sister because God said swap the sisters, but don't let the D. That's how it was supposed to be. And then Cain had two children. Not Cain. I'm sorry. Abel had two children with uh, his wife, which was Cain's twin sister. And then he was murdered by Cain. And I don't know how many children Cain had with Abel's twin sister <laughs> so they need it there okay it's they're muting your mic again but it looks like it's back Oh, I'm thinking they don't want us, like she says, you know, to know this information. And so that's why it's important that we get it out there is to help bring awareness to what is hidden from us. So hopefully, looks like she's back. Okay, can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> I can. Sorry, I'm trying to get rid of the shadow on my face. I'm right in the sun. Sorry. Okay, that might work. There we go. So, do you think is there really a mark of Cain? Mad. Or do you feel like that was something religion made up to control us and instill fear into people. It could be. I mean, we more than likely to instill fear. Um, it's not it's the same thing we're going through now. Um, hold on, I gotta grab my keys. The sun is like right on me. <clears throat> um, just kind of think about what we're going through now and then um, I guess it's not much different back then only they lived a uh, thousand to ten thousand years of life <clears throat> depending on what your DNA sequence was meant to have so that's why some people live a hundred thousand years others a thousand um, it just depended on what your purpose was here on earth the royals I'm finding out are 10,000 years, uh, like the high, high royals, because they're supposed to do some kind of like 25,000 year cycle. 
So you're only supposed to have like two or three um, kings and queens during a 25,000 year period. Um, like I said, when you start getting into the master exit, you start, they like you can access this stuff. And I, I don't even know why they call it forbidden knowledge, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's eye opening. You you get right, and excited and, and then you cry and then you get excited again and then you're mad. <laughs> right. <emotions>. And one, <laughs> right. And the one thing I still think about that, too, with that we were talking about earlier um, when we were talking was how time goes from like 200,000 B.C. to zero. And then we're in zero to 2023, 2024. There is how time goes backwards and forward from a point. It that's always a, is going up. Yeah, that's the era like, of the King of Kings. So that's the King of Kings era. So there's a there's a timeline of eras. Um, G, okay, so the era of King Solomon was before Jesus Christ. So he was appointed, Solomon bloodline was appointed by God to be the king of kings at the time. So they don't allow one family to rule over the world forever. It, it has to, the, the changing of the guard has to change over. So when we are listening to all these, these different, you know, things where everyone's like, oh, the changing of the guard. And then there's the changing of the royals. And they don't lose their titles. They just lose their positions over the planet. Does that make sense? So that's it's a changing over of the guardians and the priests, the holy priests. So that's what we are. Our, this God is giving us the opportunity to reestablish our entitlements because he's we're still in the Christ era and it was it was stolen by the um, the King Solomon bloodline. They're illegitimate and they're the ones that have been ruling this whole thing this whole time and they weren't supposed to. It's like they couldn't give up the position of running the world. <laughs> Right, they got power hungry. Right. So, and that's why we all fell into uh, sin and the age. And yeah, we're all sinners. We are born into sin because we're, if let's say we lived a thousand years, like I explained to you earlier, we don't actually hit puberty until we're 60 or 70 years old. So we're all children. In our, our cells are it, uh, anywhere between seven to 16 years old. So we're minors. That's why they say they're trafficking God's children, because they are. Because we're not supposed to be uh, as old as we are, physically. Right. And I'm curious, as we're talking about the changing of the guard, so to speak, is that similar to, or am I like creating a pattern that's not really there by saying... In astrology, like age of Aquarius, age of Pisces, are these similar to the ages of Solomon and those bloodlines? And that's why we have these long periods and this specific star sign is because that's what that family is supposed to be ruling under? It could be. I'm not really sure about astrology. I never paid much attention to it. I should. <laughs> Don't I know feel we're bad. actually still in the we're uh we're not in Aquarius. I know a lot of people want to believe that, but we're we're actually in the the energy of Jupiter and Cancer. <laughs> so, Aquarius hasn't quite hit yet. But yeah, because we're the manifestors, we're the actual AI, the angelic intelligence they have to make it manifest so they could push their agenda faster using that frequency because uh, cancer is the home energy. I don't know the energy. Uh, Jupiter's aggressive. So I guess the Jupiter and uh, cancer comes in to protect the home, right? Because that's what crabs do is they, they're protectors. So right. Jupiter being the volcanic, gassy, whatever it is, um, is the more dominant position to try to protect the home. So the home would be Earth. And then Aquarius, uh, we're not in, I don't believe, I, from my understanding with the, the forbidden esoteric knowledge, we are not in Aquarius yet. I did post on my Facebook page 
um, a donut of soul, uh, the specific clock. Uh, I can't remember the title of it right now. It's in one of the books that I have, and I ran across it to try to show people what kind of time that they use. <laughs> so I don't know if anybody right. tried to geek out on that or not. And do you think during the time of... I, I, I know Julius Caesar took us into the Julian calendar, which had the 13 months and all the months named for the Romans. But then we switched to the Gregorian calendar, which I believe is the one we're using now. Do you think that they're constantly changing our calendar so that we don't know what age we're in, so we don't? utilize the power of the age i believe so um but there's a lot of calendars there's even an angelic calendar um there's a lot of calendars so i would have to i'd have to go into the forbidden knowledge and see how many different calendars that they use and i'm also curious why like with time i i know everybody says time is a natural creation that we use to tell day from night but i sit there and i look at it from the perspective of if time is natural why do we have daylight savings and why does time change in the uk differently than the us same in other countries and some places don't do you know the time changes and it's like it's become this convoluted confusing measurement and <laughs> yeah i'm like you know was that done on purpose to keep mm -hmm. us like separate keep us in chaos chaos so a lot of their motto, motto is Chaos out of order, order out of chaos. So how do you create chaos with theater? Theater is timely, just like when you're in a, a symphony. Everything is about time. That's where time came from was, you know how when people are musicians and they have the, the clicking clock that goes tick, 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 that sets your beat? The that's, a, yeah, the, that's a rhythmic, like, time. That's, how, that's the time you're scaling whatever your song is on same thing with theater so theater has you got to come out at the right time so we are living in a theater so we are theatrically performing everybody is whether you know you're doing it or not cops theatrically perform when we call them here comes the performance right on time <laughs> depending on where you live <laughs> right well it's a good time you know and yeah. We always, yeah, we got stuff we got to do, but, but yeah, so everything yeah. is, there's only time down here, and when, the more knowledge you have, and you're not afraid to look into, but again, it's, it, everybody has a specific time they're going to wake up. God can't wake everybody up all at the same time, because it would, the frequencies would, like, it would crash, it would be a bad idea, so... From my understanding, the high kings and queens are going to be waking up first so they can restore the kingdoms that have been taken over by the Luciferians and the invader races and the occupation. Um, and then when they're restored, then they have to fix their kingdom realms, whatever that looks like. Um, and there's 275 countries that, you know, 75 of them you don't even know exist. Like, there's there's lots of countries that nobody knows about <laughs> again i've posted that yeah. on my facebook too to show pictures of uh different maps to show people what they're where they're at what the names are so sorry there's mosquitoes out here <laughs> no you're fine and i'm curious your thoughts of we we are talking you mentioned tartaria and tartaria is becoming more prolific in the esoteric realms where more people are starting to share architecture you know giants were there 
that they had uh, free energy and they knew how to utilize the energy of the earth to move vehicles and stuff. Is that going to resurgence and Tartaria is going to return? Or did that civilization really get destroyed to the point to where there is no it, more? It was one of the resets. So what? it's a past reset. It's not our current reset. Oh, my gosh. They're in my face now. Um, we're going to be a reset. Uh if we don't stop it, we're not supposed to be a reset, but it is up to humanity what they want to do. Um, it's our choice because of free will. And there's God put it, God learns like we learn. So even though they're all knowing and all everything else, they're still young gods and creators and, and mega gods and stuff like that. With each reset, God learns just like they learn because they, they, the fallen angels know heaven, they know creator, so they know how to get around it, you know, all the loopholes, right? So when he brings out the, the heirs to bring us out of the, the, the bad kingdoms, the bad guys try to figure out how to keep us in it. So it's literally, it is a chess game. I know it's different kinds of games, you know, um, so it's kind of hard to think like describe i guess i can think about it all day long because i'm i'm actually part of the chess pieces now um and there's other people that are doing the book of life as well who are chess pieces i'm on a call don't yeah get it sorry <laughs> oh you're fine they're like i guess i'm gonna like get bug spray for everybody <laughs> um but it's at different layers. The games are at different layers. It depends on where you're at uh, in the sequence. So we are in pretty much the arena of the current gods over the world, which are the Illuminati, you know, the fallen angels, the invader races. And the occupation race was actually one that we invited here. I don't know how many years ago. It could have been a couple million years ago. It could have been 50,000. I'm not sure the timeline when they got here. But we invited them here to help us with the invader races. And then they actually occupied the planet because of that. So, for example, like when we go to war with other countries and we don't end up leaving, that was them. <laughs> right. They stayed because they were like, oh, you can't take care of yourselves. So we have to help you. We have to be the people over you because... You, you got stuck with all these invader races, and that just wasn't the case. It's, you know. So, yeah, they stuck around, and they're actually the government that rules over everybody, and they're the occupation, is what they call themselves. I don't know what the actual race is, because the invader races are like the Anunnaki and, you know, the Palladians and stuff like that. So, it'll be fun to figure it out. <laughs> right. Go. And the Fallen I'm Angels curious. are the biggest problem, though. Right. I'm curious your thoughts on with everything that you know is I've heard talks of like we had the Parthenon in Tennessee near Nashville or it might actually be in Nashville totally reconstructed to scale and that was because that was supposed to be like the new Jerusalem. Then I've heard talks of, yes, and the capital of the cabals, America, is in Colorado. Did it shit from Tennessee, or are these just two different factions that were, like, trying to claim the nation, territory? There, well, just America, or are we talking on a worldly scale? <laughs> Well, I don't know what their game plan was. I just know... Well, like... it's still there. Their game plan's still there until the heirs come forward. So if you guys don't know that you're heirs, how can you come forward and claim it if you don't? So in 2012, 
Now, and here's something to think about. And again, we're going to get into the Bible. And I'm sorry if I offend anybody. But again, when you go on the journey, you find out there was more than one Jesus. And that's, those are God's children. I, I don't put limits on creation or a creator. So they if they want 50 people down here to try to save the world, they're going to put 50 people down here. Um, but Jesus from Mary was not really crucified okay we're seeing this today in our own world how people are supposed to be dead and how many times did they go to get mo you know right. <laughs> you know what i mean they're not really dead those are performances so jesus 12 didn't or jesus 9 didn't really die somebody else did die in his place it was an apostle who took his place that was the that was the sacrifice so um, you know it'd be interesting to go back and see which apostle disappeared like right. no longer got messaged and be like, there's who was on right. the <laughs> That's who it was. He didn't get arrested. He's not mentioned anymore. Yeah, I'm not sure which one it is. Um, but the real Jesus, from my understanding, lived to be his name. He changed his name to Master Melchizedek. So he was the red bloodline. And then you had the, the blue bloodline, which was Joshua. Uh, and he was the the other Melchizedek bloodline. So the blue pill, the red pill, the red coats, the blue coats, the red, white, and blue on our flags all over the world. Um, those are the war between the two houses. That doesn't even include the fallen angels and the invader races. So they use the bloodlines in order to keep us confused. So... To my knowledge, Jeshua 12 ascended out during the war back then. That, that war used to be in the Bible. They took it out now. So if you, anybody has a grand, their grandparents' Bible, it's in there. Um, I used to read it a lot. Uh, I don't know why I was drawn to it. But it, it, to me, it made sense because I, I had to read it. Um, Jesus 9 made a deal with... Uh, Peter, who ended up being St. Peter of the Vatican, and now we know what the Vatican is. <laughs> yeah. So now you got to see who's actually the deceivers here. And so Peter was a deceiver. John was a deceiver because John ended up being uh, the accountant or whatever you call the person that did the accounting for the royal house of uh, Matthew who Matthew in the Bible was actually a king. His name was Matthew, King Matthew Syro of the Benjamite tribe, House of Seth, House of Seth, because that's my bloodline. Um, and I had to look at it because those are the ones that I have to refer to when I go to the Hall of Titles. <laughs> so I was like, whoa, he was a king? What? So again, you're going to see some stuff. <laughs> you're just like, I thought he was a prophet. They said these guys were poor, you know, but no, Jesus was a king and he was the king of kings. Jesus 9 was the king of kings. He did not grow up poor. Um, Joseph and Mary were royals. They had, they had titles, kingship titles, yeah. queen titles. It's amazing what yeah. they're not and telling us. It's interesting because like you say, you know, they were rich, but we're told they're poor. And... Right. You're traveling all over the known world. And we know in today's terms, you can't just pick up and just decide, yeah, I'm going to go walk over to, say, California today. And, you know, no big deal. Or I'm going to walk over to Mexico. No one's going to care. Right. No, it costs money to get where you're going. Exactly. And where you're staying. And so it's like, yeah. These people who were traveling. Oh, all yeah, over, they traveled all over the world. Oh, the church like, covered it for me. Okay, who covers the church's bill? <laughs> yeah. The poor people? Come on. Yeah, it's it's a lot of common sense, but it it you don't know until you know. You don't know until you get into it. I didn't know until I saw this. I knew there was, you know, some deception, but not to the scale of what I'm seeing now. It's yeah. like wow. And um, I'm curious because one thing that got me, well, okay, it was like three things that got me kicked out of Bible study class. Yes, I've actually been kicked out of Bible study. <laughs> was, is that I said, the first one was under Hebrew law to call Jesus rabbi, he had to be married. There was no honorary titles and they all were like, well, he wasn't married, but he was a rabbi. I was like, fine i'll you know 
okay, whatever, moving on. And then right. I was like, his feet being anointed by Mary Magdalene. I was like, under Hebrew law, only the wife could do that. So there's your wife. And they're like, no, right. she just did him a favor. I'm like, <clears throat> I don't think so, people. Where are you getting this? Like, honor right. you are allowed favoritism. To touch. <laughs> yeah, men weren't allowed to touch royal women. So, and even back in the day uh, when they were courting, if somebody was courting somebody and they, they had a courting contract, um, they referred to the, so, and then I heard this with a, a guy who did research for the Templars. Um, and I'll, I can send you the videos. Maybe you can post them, but he said that the demons that were referred to with Mary was they pulled the seven demons out or whatever, seven to nine demons. Those are the priests that follow her around while she's being courted to make sure she doesn't do anything impure <laughs> before marriage. So when you're being courted, you have eyes on you, especially when you're a royal. They will not let you get anywhere near anybody. No other man can touch. No other man can look at you. I mean, they're awful. So that's why they call them demons, because they act like demons watching you constantly, and they won't leave you alone until after the conception. Yeah. Or not the conception. The uh, the night of the wedding. What do you call I don't know what you call that. The uh, Honeymoon. Yeah, well, back then they had to make sure that they connected. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah what? The, uh, <laughs> the awkward night, as I like to call it, where the family sits and watches to make sure. Right. Well, it's actually the priests that watch, which is even grosser. But yeah. Um, and then for the men, it was it was her priestesses that would follow the man to make sure he didn't become impure during the courtship. So then they, I, there was another term for the, I think that's where the term witches came in because they were cackling, you know, don't do this, don't do that, don't look at that girl. <laughs> hagging, they were nagging. Nagging, the nagging. Which witches. became the hagging. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's just interesting yeah. to see the type of culture that was back then. And, and then again, and then after, after that, you know, the honeymoon night, the, 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 the sealment of it, then they would leave. They, had, they didn't have to watch them anymore. Yeah. I think well, Conception was the child. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't uh, know why I can't think of the name. Because it starts with the C, and there's, it's so. Right. <laughs> there's so many terms around it that it's like, you just want to go to the one. But yeah, right. and the, the third one, though, that I brought up that, that really, like, upset everybody was we. I never went through with the dogma of religion, but I heard them say Jesus died on the cross to absolve sin. And I said, if something's been absolved, we cannot do it anymore. So right. we are not sinners anymore. And they said, yes, you are. I'm like, then you say Jesus died on the cross for nothing. Well, we're it sinners like, because oh. we're children. We're physically children, but we're not in the physical form of a child. So I'm 44, right? So my DNA would actually, or my cells, I would say are about eight years old, eight or nine years old. So I already have children. I did get married, but we're, we're sinning because we're children. Like we're acting as our own pedophiles. And I don't want to say it that way, but... We're, we're living in sin because we're acting as adults, but our cells are still children. So that's why they say God's children are being trafficked. It's everybody. We're all enslaved. We're all in this slave system around the world. And we're not living our full life of the thousand years or 10,000 years. So we're still children. So that's what the sin is. So, yes, we are all sinning because we they have they did mess with the DNA so that uh, that we age quicker, but we're our cells are still children. Yeah. So do that's you why we're not that... punishable by death because of the sin. Yeah. So I'm curious your thoughts of Cathar, France. I'm sure you're familiar with that area. It's where the Knights Templar kind of hung out. And yeah, and captured Mary Magdalene. Their territory. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's interesting you say captured Mary Magdalene. I heard she took a boat over there with Jesus and 
they, uh, Jesus. There. So that that phrase uh, that Matthew, uh, I want to say eleven eighteen, but I don't think that's the right one. Uh, Matthew said uh, Jesus handed over or gave the keys to the kingdom of heaven on earth to Peter. So keys are figuratively speaking. There was no physical key to right. the heavens. It's a DNA. So what did you, who did Jesus hand over to Peter? And then why was her name Magdalene? Because her real name was Mary of Bethany. <laughs> How did she become Magdalene, the tower? She was locked in a tower for 480 years. She became the whore and the prostitute because of the, the Templars and the Vatican and the Illuminati raped her for hundreds of years to get their own bloodline from her so that they could control the kings to the kingdom of heaven on earth through the DNA. That was upsetting for me to see. That was very yeah, upsetting. I can imagine <laughs> It's funny and when you say key, the keys to the kingdom. My first thought every time I heard that was like music or a sound frequency, a key. It's a DNA. Where are the keys? Yeah. I'm a key, but what key was I? I just found out I'm the Trinity keys. So what is the Trinity keys? And I don't really want to go into what the Trinity keys are because, again, there's a lot of people that aren't ready to hear that stuff. So... What happens when I, you know, do claim these titles? Uh, one of them is the Mary Magdalene King, Kingdom of Heaven on Earth. So I am a key holder through the DNA sequence, frequency, what they call it. That's why your DNA is so important. That's why they need to know who you are. They want you to get your DNA in there, which we all have. Um, because every time you go to the doctor and they swab anything on your body, they have your DNA and they send it to the lab. So now it's registered. So they know who you are on a digital format instead of on paper now. So they're the ones they're trying to take out. I would imagine are the, 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 uh, the actual heirs to the planet. So, and they want to bring us down to just a few. Yeah, and it's interesting you put it that way because I've I always remembered in relig mainstream religion in the time of Revelation there was the story of the last Zion and nobody really knows right. the story and I'm like how do you not know this story? It's the la it's supposed to be the child who carries the bloodline of mary and jesus the last of the lineage comes awakens and you know all of the, and it changes you know and starts the revelation or not revelation yeah the revelation period armageddon so to speak and i'm like well I'm sorry, but if Jesus, as religion says, has no kids, how do you have a last Zion? There has right. to, the has blood to be an error. Yeah. In use. So it's like you guys put all these prophecies and all these things into place, but then you corrupted the story to where now nothing makes sense because. Right. <laughs> Everything is all weird now. Um, oh, what there was a point I was getting to earlier with Jesus uh, becoming a uh, master uh, Melchizedek. I think it was Master Alchemy Melchizedek, something like that. But anyways, he lived to be a hundred or a thousand thirty-six or thirty-eight years old. So, and and even with the Tartaria stuff, where they're saying that they they took a or they added a thousand years right so let's say they did add that thousand years and we all know about the um uh the mayan calendar it's also a treaty the treaty ended when the heir died so how is it that the heirs like myself can come forward if you know jesus was the last heir so there you go there's another 
step to it. So how many other heirs were there in between all this? Mary, Queen of Scots, was an heir. Uh, King, um, what's his name? Arthur was an heir. And all of them got locked in towers. <laughs> I know that everybody thinks that uh, King Arthur died from a, a, an injury in war or something, but he actually didn't. Because Merlin was the deceiver, the magician. Merlin, we don't, I don't know who Merlin is. I, I loved Merlin growing up, and then I found out, you know, everybody that they promote are the bad guys, right? And everybody that's yeah. the bad guy in the movies was actually the good guy, <laughs> defending so, their world. I actually just did a little insight video on the Knights of the Round Table being uh -huh. essentially star beings, like hybrids, and, you know... Not until after... Zodiac. Yeah, not until after Arthur died. He did have an heir yeah. with, uh, what's her name? She was the queen, but he was Guinevere. locked in a tower. Guinevere, yeah, she did have an heir, and that's when they created that, that war. He was injured, but not that injured. But he, from the story that I'm seeing now, uh, with everything coming out to me, um, he was injured, Merlin, and one of the other knights left with him. The knight was murdered by Merlin, but because he did have an injury, it did fester. Because he wasn't taken to the palace, he was taken to the tower. The tower was in the middle of a lake. I don't remember what it's called, but I think it's in the Avalon. movie. But yeah, so there was a tower. So he was locked in a tower, so Guinevere could actually run the kingdom. Um, and if they needed his seal or signature, they would go to the tower and get it. Same thing with Mary Magdalene. That's how they reset. They would allow these people like myself to ascend. We get to go down to Area 51, restore our DNA, and then they're going to try to capture us so they can lock us in towers. I mean, how many towers does Trump have right now? <laughs> I'm just pointing something out. <laughs> He's got three. So Mary Magdalene had quite a few towers in Europe that she was moved to. And people forgot who she was, so that's why they called her Mary of the Tower. So... All the heirs got locked in a tower so that they could keep the matrix going. They would just reset a new matrix. And that's what they're doing is they're capturing uh, the heirs after we get uh, our entitlement. And then we disappear. Nobody remembers who we were. Yeah. And Magdalene's Tower and Renla Chateau. I just love saying that sometimes. Renla Chateau. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. I have a feeling like there's more to that than meets the eye because, yes, it's on an intersection of ley lines. Yes, there's hidden stuff there. But I feel like, like you're, you know, pointing out, you know, being the tower where she was at, that, yes, there is a deeper yet that we have yet to discover purpose for that tower. Right. Well, it's to lock up the airs. And that God, like I said, God learns with each step. I have a fail safe and I was part of the MK Delta programming. So I can fight. I can't take on a whole army. I'm not like superwoman or anything, <laughs> but I can, I can protect myself to an extent. So, and I, again, I have a fail safe that should work, but God didn't abandon everybody that they're, they're letting us think that, you know, these Luciferians and everything, but he's been trying there's because of free will, People have to come down here in a certain way. So there's certain frequencies, certain people born that are supposed to be able to try to free the people from Lucifer's kingdom. But if people keep saying, no, that's not accurate, that'll never happen. You know, if you still say, no, God will never do that, you're, you're pretty much saying Lucifer wins. Because why are you putting restrictions on the person that created life itself? <laughs> you know? So, but because of free will... There's there's laws even he can't trespass over. So it is up to the people. If the people want to say, yeah, I am an inheritor. I am the heir. It's in the Bible. The old, Again, older versions of the Bible, it says God is the heir. Jesus is where the co-creators or the co-heirs, and we are the co-creators. But there are invader races here, and there's occupation races here, and then, of course, the fallen angels. And the only way you can find out who's who is if you do the Book of Life, which is the master exit document out of their system. So that's what they don't want. They don't want a large amount of people waking up. And I believe 
from what I'm seeing that um, the Jesus era was so important because a lot of people actually woke up. A lot of people actually did the master exit. I think there was actually a hundred something people which would have restored the kingdom. So then they started the war to try to stop them and it worked. They were successfully able to stop the ascension and the freedom of the people even then. So I don't right. know what this is going to look like, but I think we have a better chance at it. And one of the things that I find interesting about religion, too, is, like you're saying, going to the grandparents' books and before, we were all children of God, made in his right. image. Then all of a sudden, I believe, not. <laughs> until the Nicaea, it becomes Jesus is the son of God. And we all need to worship him to get into the kingdom of heaven. And it's like all of a sudden we went from everyone to one. Right. And- <laughs> no, we're just the we're the higher DNA frequency to help everybody else. It, it's a chain reaction because we're the angelic intelligence. So that's what the real AI is. We manifest it. So if you manifest God has restrictions, you're going to manifest God having restrictions, but it's only going to apply to you because you're manifesting your world. But if you if you study electrical frequencies, then you can actually see how it works. If I reach out to you or you reach out to me because you feel like you have a pull in, because I'll talk to people on the phone because it, to me, it's you've got to reach out to people. If we ignore them, then nobody's connecting. Uh, you know, power can't charge itself it has to have what a grounder a connection you know there has to be something there if you want to get to the etherical energy you've got to you have to you know use copper electrical copper wiring get it up there and then you know you can do a couple of other things my grandfather had um copper wiring and he feel he was a mason though so he had that technology and uh he had free energy in his shops his, his power bill was like $13, $35 every month because, you know, the shops were running on free energy. <laughs> it was copper wiring, and I think he used a tractor alternator um, and a switch. Wow. Free energy. And to think we've had that to where even, and this is the part that amazes me, is Tesla lights up a field of light bulbs with one light added to the circuit. They all light up and there's no source except for the ground. Right. (laughs) And all that information got suppressed because the powers that be didn't want to lose their income. And instead of being honest and saying, I don't want to lose our income, they in turn make it so that you're afraid of the technology by going, right? gosh, you know, this could kill you. And we're like, well, nobody wants to be killed. So it's like people will blindly (laughs) surrender information that is Right. right. I mean, look at the Patriot Act. We surrendered so many freedoms under the guise of being made safe, but they right. never let them go. They never, it was supposed to be temporary and it became permanent. Right. And we're all children. <laughs> yeah. So what happens when you're out with, when you have children? I have three children and I have to watch them constantly, they, you know, cause they don't know the dangers. So even though we're in an adult form, we still, you know, the, 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 what were, what are the words used? The lusting and everything else is because we have a child cells and a child mind. So we're still like little kids chasing after stuff that is not good for us. And we, children don't know better. So how are we supposed to know better? But again, once you're on that journey, you realize, holy cow. My cells are supposed to live for a thousand to 10,000 years. And I am, I'm literally only, you know, 13 to like nine, 10, 11 years old in an adult body. 
I think that movie Big describes it. Yeah. <laughs> like how <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that, but he does the magic wish. Yeah. And he's like a child in an adult body. So they're telling us right there, you're a child in an adult body. So you have the child uh, thinking, but not the actual adult thinking because our cells um, are not that old. Our, our, the way our body is right now, it is. But right. Our cells and, are still very young. And it's interesting too, talk, you know, being like talking about the childlike essence is if you look at a lot of the monarchs and the monarchies, when the time of succession came to pass and like the queen mm -hmm. didn't want to relinquish control to the heir, what came about? Regencies to right. where she can re where she gets to keep her power and rule in the name of until they deem he is or until the heir is, quote, ready to rule. And so I was like, that was a load of crap because that was just a power play of, yeah. Right. Someone didn't want to let go of their power. And so what do they do? They make a new law. Yeah, you need a regent. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, everybody is an heir. It's just. God's waking up the heirs that are supposed to restore the kingdoms and then everybody else is supposed to wake up but you're all heirs you're all you have trillions of dollars in this in the Honova treasuries that were given to us um, with each seeding if you will and the seeding is still birthed on the planet so the Adam and Eve seeding was still given a treasury um, and this is what the occupation and everybody's been trying to steal but because the fallen angels fell, the treasuries got locked up and only the kings and queens were allowed to do it. So the whole Aladdin movie tells you only one can enter here. So it's right. the one that's appointed by God. It's not, I mean, he's not going to come down here and say, I anoint you, you know, because he woke <laughs> up first. He woke you up. And the ones that were supposed to recognize that were the guardians and the priests who are now the Illuminati and the Vatican. So, Obviously, it's not going to go in our favor because they are the guardians and uh, the priests right now. Because the real ones are still down here. We're, we're all been mind blanked and we forgot. Um, but again, it's not just God trying to wake us up. It is the other angelics. It is other good people down here because they're all, all the other races are also living in the same situation we are. And they're done, you know. It's it's been this way for millions of years because their planets and their worlds and their galaxies all got blown up, you know, because of whatever that situation was. And when I was talking to one of the generals, um, because I don't know what other heirs have turned in the papers, but and I told him, I was like, look, I don't. He was like, what do you want? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's all in my book. You know, I, I just I want to restore the planet. What does that look like to you? And. I he and he said you're like the fourth person who sent me a demand letter and I was like no disrespect sir but I didn't send you a demand letter I sent you an offer it's different I'm not demanding anything I was like my thought is is that there's invader races here and there's an occupation here and you guys need to go home what that looks like I don't know I'm sure we can find a solution to the problem but we got to stop focusing on the problem so we can find the solution I was like you guys have been here for millions of years doing all this shenanigans on this world and trying to claim this world in the galaxy. And I was like, did you ever stop to think that maybe your galaxies and your planets and your quadrants are, have healed by now? I mean, you've been on this quest for a billion, over a billion years. I guarantee you there is planets that you can go back to. <laughs> so he, he thought differently. <laughs> right. So there you go. I don't want I don't want war. If we I want to save as many people as possible. We need to figure right. out who belongs to who because no, you can't take the angelic humans off the planet. That was never in anybody's contract. That was never we're we're part of the angelic race that God put here. You're part of your race that God put over in that quadrant, blah 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 blah. So the book of life will sort that out because they they do have everybody's bloodline, everybody's family tree. I've seen it all the way back to God it's amazing when you start getting into it. 
<laughs> what right. happens. It's kind of scary in the beginning because you're like, oh, they're going to come after me. But once you accept yourself into God's kingdom, he can be in your heart all day long. You can go to church all day long. That's on you. I go to church still. I do it because I want to be around good people. I'm not trying to go to the satanic clubs and be like, hey, follow me to G- uh, back to the kingdoms of heaven, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to hang out with the bad guys. Right. But we have to be able to show God that we're serious to come home. So again, what does that look like? I don't know. I'm still doing it. I'm not going to stop doing it because I'll always go in first and then I'll, I won't leave until everybody else is out. That's a military standpoint. That was my job. First one in, last one out. Whether you were dead, the bodies have to go too. Right. And you have the military background to, uh, stand with it and comprehend that and one thing i was just thinking about because you were talking like you know you said your grandfather ran his business on free energy well this is not his business his shop he had well, his shop. yeah but and we were talking about tesla and i heard i believe i think it was like there's six towers now and one of them is in Texas, and it's just a standalone tower on some random property that's a Tesla tower. And I can't help wondering if, like you're saying, as the air arises and reclaims, are these towers being set up to aid the airs and to awaken or help the aid the heirs in doing their stuff because why would there be these random tesla towers being put up right different areas right or they were already there and they're just letting them out well they're pretty there was a lot of uh abandoned ones right and the interesting thing is is when I say Tesla Tower, I know everyone's going to go and look up Tesla Tower and they're going to see the image of like Westinghouse where it almost looks like an oil rig. And that's <laughs> not what it looks like. It is, it almost looks like a water tower. It's a tube with a dome on the, or a mushroom. It doesn't look like what we were told was a Tesla tower and I had to look it up and I was shocked when I saw it on TV because I would drive past it and be like, that is an odd looking building and finding out it's a Tesla tower. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't mind them coming back, but every anybody can make free energy. I kind of already as gave as it away. Us. <laughs> well, no, I, I I talked about it, so just go back and listen. <laughs> I was hinting at it. You gotta kind of gotta figure out the rest, but it's not it's not too difficult. It seems difficult, but I think when people start trying to do something, it comes back to you. The biggest challenge that we have is remembering. Yes. Uh, We're already, it's already in our DNA. We just need to remember. And how you remember is doing it. And on a personal note of memory of everything is, you know, I know you're, you know, you're forward with your secret space program, MK Delta programming, you know, you have memories of that. I have obtained a partial memory of my involvement in the space program. And I'm constantly like trying to figure out how or what I can do to unlock more. And it seems like it's always just random. Kind of. Um, So... What I found with the master exit document, and I don't know how many like Patriot fighters you have in your group that are in a lot of these Patriot groups out here that are trying to teach people how to get out of the system, which really they're not teaching you how to get out of the system. They're teaching you how to stay in it and 
you know, become more harvestable was my personal experience because I was in a lot of those groups too and um, bad things happened. So, like, fed level bad things happened and I was just going through the groups just like what they said. Um, The master exit documents written in Old English. So, I don't know how many people like to read, like, Shakespeare, you know, the any kind of the old books i have the old books we were raised on them so understanding theater there's the sequence and the frequencies that we have to do to i would say deprogram yourself is that way go back and start reading the actual shakespearean writing and try to understand it because it's deprogramming So in the master exit document that I have is written in Old English. And as you go, you have to type it up um, because I'm not giving out the templates anymore because it's just causing problems. Too many people want to grammarize it in today's language and you can't do that. It's it's not going to do anything. They're just going to send it back or arrest you because you're you're calling out the treasury. Um, So with each step, this was my spiritual journey. Uh, I am working with other people on it, uh, just in case anything happens to me, there's other people that are going to try to fight to save the world. Um, it was like I was spiritually sewing myself back together um, with my soul and my spirit and my physical body. So the trinity of ourselves, our temples, um, I'm getting out of the book of the dead, going into the book of the life, and this is what that real ascension looks like. So we're, when we were born and they gave us our death certificate and put us in the graveyard while we're still alive, that's where we're at. We're living in the graveyard. Um, so that's because they can control the dead. So, and I, I learned this again on my own personal journey these last couple of years since COVID. And um, <coughs> sorry, my phone wasn't charging. Um, and I was removed from my house, my children and I were, but there was one deputy sheriff there with a warrant. The other people that were there were, um, coroner sheriffs. So after we had gotten removed from the house, I didn't fight them because they were big. They were, they were feds, believe it or not, coroner sheriffs are federalized and, and they're mean. They are very mean. Um, they had three guns on them, tasers and everything else that possible could hurt me. (laughs) And I didn't want my kids to see that. So, um, I gave in and we're sitting outside and the, the, the coroner sheriff comes up and starts saying, blah, 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 blah. This is, you know, you have 15 days to get your stuff, this, that, and the other. And, uh, and I asked, he's all, you have any more questions? I was like, yeah, actually I do. I was like, so you're a sheriff's coroner, right? He said, yeah. I was like, don't coroners handle the dead? And he starts laughing. He's like, we do. And I was like, so are you pretty much chasing the living dead? <laughs> and he <laughs> laughed hard. And he was like, you can say that. And I was like, in plain sight. Wow. So, and then I had to go in and look at the grave robber laws. And the grave robber laws actually do apply to the living dead. Your house is your crypt. And the only ones that can come in there to remove the dead are the coroners. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my gosh. It's like, wow. Mind blown. Yeah. So we're actually at an hour and 23 minutes. Do you have okay. time for one more question? Sure. So Iron Bear 78 is asking, does Mary know who the tribes of five are? Um, oh, I, I can give you all the tribes' names. I'd have to do it on another podcast, though. I come from the Benjamite tribe on Mary Magdalene's dad's side. So that's one tribe. Uh, I have them written down, but I, I don't have them here, unfortunately, because we're at the park, because I don't have very good internet at my house. I find that shocking. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> all that you have to share, that you don't have good internet. <laughs> I know. That's why they do it. So they're like, let's not make it easy for her. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's interesting because, like, my friend was pointing out earlier, like, we started talking about, like, the 
MK Ultra and everything, and all of a sudden your phone cuts out and you're <laughs> muted, and it's like it didn't happen until we mentioned that, and it's like right. yes, they can interfere with signal. And I'm in a public park, so I'm using their Wi-Fi. So <laughs> it's an unfortunate game of Thrones. What can I say? <laughs> Yeah, and I can't help wondering, too, if sometimes all the resurgence of why, like, old movies are being remade and shown in a new light. And it's like, and I find myself going and saying the way they're doing it now makes it much more clear the hidden message to it. But a lot of people still look at it and go, well, they're just telling this again. I'm like, no, you're missing the imagery of it, the subliminal right. message to it that the, you're supposed to be getting. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to me how some people will see that, some won't. And it's like, I can't help wondering, like when you're saying, you know, the heirs are out there and don't know it. Could that be a sign of who you are is your ability to see that which is yeah unstable? that's funny you say that because in the document it says i'm not a belligerent i'm not lost at c s e e slash s e a and or um i or, or i'm coming back from space so Space is also in there. That was on the Treasury document. The C S E E slash S E A was on the trust document. So I actually combined the two documents back together as one because part of the Illuminati's agenda was to not let anybody ascend out back into the kingdoms of God. So they separated the documents. And the Masons and the Jesuits took the um the the trust document, which again is your straw man. So they, that, that's how they controlled your physical. And then the, the, the Templars um, took the... So, um, it does say it in there. I'm not a belligerent. I'm not a child. I am of age and majority. And I'm no longer lost. I, or I, I, I can see you with your eyes. And you're not lost at sea beyond God's kingdom. Um, cause they, you know, again, if you know the straw man, you'll know the trick is, is that you're lost at sea, which is your sight and the ocean. you you can see where you're at now and then lost in space, lost in space. can be a lot of things. We are on the surface space of earth. There is an underground space, which is the underground cities, um, military bases. And then there's the space of the water, which is where the aquanoids live, right? So there's all these different types of space. When they say outer space, that implies between planets, between um, quadrants. We are in the alpha quadrant. So um, the reptanoids come from the delta quadrant. And um, I believe the phanoids, they have their own galaxies. And I, I, I believe they might be in the echo quadrant. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but again, it's, it's all you once you start really waking up and again i i was deprogrammed in the beginning uh back in 2019 and then there was an operative that came out to try to kill me because i broke my kill switch and i survived it so now i can't be controlled um unless they physically come and do it so it just turns into a huge fight <laughs> so um well, what's interesting, too, is I, spiritually, you know, growing up, one lady, when I was getting a reading from her, said a lot of what you'll learn is when you start to see with eyes unseen. And I was like, why do they always give me these riddles? And it's like, now it's like, I look at it and I'm like going, right. oh, my God, I'm yeah, seeing everything with eyes unseen <laughs> now. Right. Yeah, and everything that everybody's doing in all these different groups, the quantum groups, 
uh, David Strait with his stuff. Um, and then, you know, just there's other groups out there too. Um, everything that everybody's doing, because again, I was in these and my friends were in the other ones and um, everything's in the master exit document. It covers all that stuff that everybody's doing. But they're doing it in pieces, so you can't, you're just, we're, we're hamsters running in a circle. They're not going to let anybody out. Right. So Because they already made the oath. They only freed their straw man. Right. So we're actually at an hour and 30 minutes, and I know you've okay. got <laughs> kids running around, so, you know, I don't want to take any more of your family time, but I want to... Thank you for coming on and thank you. Where can people find you? If um, they I have I have a web page. Yeah, uh, my web page is adona of soul um dot us uh, or I have a Facebook page, Adona of Soul. That one is Adona of uh Soul uh at Gmail because I had to have a Gmail account for Facebook for some reason. So um, you can look it up that way. I think the Facebook one, I accidentally put two D's and one N. So try both variations and you'll, you'll see it. It's, it should be a public page, um, but that's another one. Um, my telegram just oh, came then. up. Yeah, so there, they should be, the, the web page should be connected to the other one. <coughs> um, mm. I do not, not talk on telegram like send out messages i just do like ai art because they they made it so people couldn't see my tele or not my telegram twitter twitter um i can't talk on there or nobody can see it so i did my art and now they, they're letting people see my twitter account so i can't talk they won't let me talk on it <laughs> That's but if funny. you want to see some art, you can see some art. I, I do leave hints in art, just so you guys know. Well, all the links that you gave me are in the description. I don't know if your Twitter was in there, but I do know your Facebook page is in there. And so before we cut out and right. I believe the web page is on there too. And so what is a golden a, a golden nugget from your life that you would want to leave with everyone watching this? One little golden nugget. One golden nugget. Don't be afraid to remember. That's a good one actually. I like that. Thanks. So <laughs> I am going to say good night to everyone that's watching. If you're watching this in the East or Central time zones, it's nighttime. So or depending on where you are in the world, make it a great day, great night. Step into the world with love. We need more love in the world, and don't be afraid to remember who you are, what you can do, and like Mary says, you know, don't be afraid to remember. That is a beautiful thing, because that is something that people can't take away from us as much as they try to erase. Is I feel like there's always little nuggets of the memories still there. So, good night, everyone. <laughs> right? <laughs>